Hello there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be touching on the Revit API in Python for Dynamo. Um, so we're going to be looking at creating sheets specifically, but we're going to spend a bit of time just actually talking about the Revit API in the context of Dynamo and beyond. So we've previously looked at fundamentals of Python, uh, the boilerplate in Dynamo, and also just some basic examples of how to apply Dynamo to Python. But today we're looking at the API, so how to create sheets. And there'll be two other examples that we'll touch on in the next two videos. Then we'll move on to some more advanced things after that. So this video, we're going to show you how to navigate the Revit API docs uh, based on a task you're trying to solve. We're going to talk about wrapping and unwrapping elements between Revit and Dynamo. And also just show you how to do what's called a transaction in Python in Dynamo as well. Uh, and then we're going to look at how to create an actual sheet using Python as well as an example. Please note that I can't teach you the entire API. Um, it's massive, there's a lot to learn, they're still finding more out about it each day it seems. Uh, I'm just going to use some examples, um, and some people are trying to learn the entire API and they still haven't finished yet. Um, I'll talk about one of them in this video. So what is Revit API? App application Programming Interface. Um, so essentially it's the way that we can interact with Revit um, to do things like automation and create programs, plugins, apps, things that draw on the functions that the program can achieve. Uh, a great example of someone that's really pushing Revit API is uh, Jeremy Tamek. He's, he's running a website called The Building Coder. It's essentially a blog uh, where he talks about his exploration of C Sharp. Uh, and he's, you know, miles ahead of anyone I know that's doing this sort of thing. Um, I'm just starting to sort of understand what the page is about, what it means. Um, I'm, I'm starting to recognize syntax in C Sharp that Python also has. So it, it's been a good way for me to sort of get exposed to the bigger picture. Might be worth just touching base every now and then with this page just to see what's going on. As well as that, um, there's a developer center by Revit um, that has a good little tutorial called My First Revit Plugin. If you're looking to jump into C Sharp instead, I recommend having a look into this instead because um, it's quite different to using Python in Dynamo. So um, you can sort of see the difference between a C Sharp or a Python call uh, here. So you can see C Sharp's pretty different um, in that you define the variable before you, you set it. Um, but some of the namespaces and the names are similar. Uh, so you will see some familiarity between them and that's where the API docs can be sort of useful, um, but not entirely useful sometimes. And the API docs is broken down into classes, essentially. This is, this is the main area that I find functions and methods and things I can use in Python for Dynamo. Um, for example, here, this sun and shadow setting class is obviously where all the sun and shadow settings get kept for views. Um, but they, they have members, um, which are methods and properties typically, and sometimes enumeration methods as well, um, or t enumeration types. Um, typically, you'll mostly be using methods and calling on properties of objects. Uh, there will be some generic functions such as filtered element collectors that we'll look at later, which apply to many, many classes at the same time. Essentially, uh, all the classes do what's called inheriting this function from, from its host class. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll look at this uh, in a later tutorial. But essentially, you can look at methods and properties a little bit like this. So it's, it's a similar syntax typically to how you do methods in Python um, in that you're just chaining with a dot after the object or the base class if you're creating an object of that class. And then two brackets, you're typically passing arguments or you're passing nothing if there's no arguments, but still including the brackets in, in most cases. Um, so you can see here, we're gonna be using some, some methods and properties, for example, creating a view sheet. So the view sheet is a class and the create is a method in this case. Um, similarly, we're also going to be setting properties of objects of a class. So sheet is an object that belongs to the view sheet class and we'll be setting its name as a property. Um, it, it can be quite hard to find good API doc references for Python. Um, the Revit API docs is obviously one of the best references, if not for C Sharp and Revit. Uh, but Python, it's a little bit more spread out. Um, there has been some acknowledgement by people that work in mostly C Sharp that they're not looking to you know, create a concise Python library anytime soon because most people have moved beyond into C Sharp, um, beyond Python at that level. Some shortcuts that I've taken along the way is just having a look at how other developers have solved problems using Dynamo and Python. Um, these are probably the main packages I use just for learning, um, observing some of the nodes. The, the node we're looking at today was actually mostly 
something I learned through looking at a similar node from Steam nodes, for example. Like I'm not going to take absolute credit for it by any means. Um, I've just built my own version as a, a learning exercise, and also it stopped working in Revit 2020, so I thought I may as well build one that, that is up to date as well. There's also some resources. So there's a couple of Autodesk University classes listed here that are great, um, as well as that, the Dynamo Primer, and more importantly, the Dynamo Python Primer by Oliver Green has come about recently, and I found that was a really useful reference as well. And there's obviously some courses on Linda as well. One of the ones I know best is Jumping Into Python by Jeremy Graham. And he also has a course on C Sharp and developing your first Revit plugin. Um, so we're going to be talking about wrapping and unwrapping elements today. So unwrapping is essentially Revit's way of working with elements out of Dynamo and exposing them to the Revit API. So essentially you check out the element from Dynamo. So it becomes Revit owned. And whilst it's unwrapped, um, it, it can be, be exposed to all the methods and properties that we looked at before in Revit API docs. So if we need to interact with Dynamo sourced elements, we need to unwrap them using this function. On the flip side, if we want to return elements to Dynamo from Revit back to the Dynamo canvas or to run Revit node pro properties across them from Dynamo's DLLs itself, um, we do need to return them back by wrapping them. And we don't unfortunately just say wrap element, there's another function. Um, so we need to return them by saying to DS type and then a Boolean, um, which typically I've seen as false. Um, I would go on more about it, but there's actually an article here that covers it pretty in depth. So I advise you read that rather than have me talk about it for another five minutes. <laughs> so let's just go into our example to give some context to what we're talking about. So typically, if we want to do something in Dynamo in Python, it's good to visit the API docs just to see what methods and properties are available in the Revit API. So in this case, we're going to inspect the view sheet class. So this one threw me off when I first came into the API. Not everything is named like you'd expect it to be named in the API docs so or in the Revit API. Um, when Revit was first made, um, it was made very early on from what they knew Revit was going to become and things weren't necessarily named like they're named now. Uh, people that named things in Revit were programmers, they weren't necessarily architects or engineers. So you will find some strange references like this, um, but it sort of makes sense when you think about it more because views and sheets inherit properties from each other and methods from each other as well. Um, so we're just going to jump onto the API docs. Uh, so I'm just going to be looking for the view sheet class. I've got the element class here. I'm just going to scroll down. You can search as well, but just to get an idea of how many classes we're looking at. I mean, that, that that's how many classes are in the Revit API. So it, it's quite a few, <laughs> which is why I'm not going to teach you everything about the Revit API. Um, so there we go. So here's our view sheet class. So we've got members, which are the methods and the properties. So let's just first look for something to create sheets. So hopefully they just call to create, right? Um, and luckily they did. So you can see here, it's also a static member. So we're creating an element in this case. We're not just drawing upon an existing sheet. Um, so you can see here the syntax if you were working in C Sharp or VB or C++. Uh, but in this case, we're working in Python. So it's not quite what we need, but we can sort of start to interrogate the API function and get a better idea of probably what it's going to look like. So we've got a view sheet, which is our class dot create because we know we're going to be using a method in Python. And then we're bracketing this and we're going to have two arguments. We're going to have the active document and the title block type. So we can sort of pretty much know what we're looking at based on that. Um, two things that we can't see here that we care about is the sheet name and the sheet number. So how do we do this? Um, so in this case, usually you'll want to be looking at properties. So we'll go down to properties and let's just look for name and number. So I see name, that's great. Where's number? So let's keep looking. Sheet number. So sometimes things aren't named quite how you expect them to be. In this case, it makes sense because name is actually a property that belongs to the class of element and it's inherited by the sheet class as well. So it's a very generic property that belongs to a lot of things in the Revit API, which, which makes sense. So in this case, we're just going to be using dot name to, to obtain this property. And similarly, we're going to be using dot sheet number to obtain or set the sheet number as well. So we're pretty much ready to get started. Um, so we'll just jump into Revit at this point, I think. Uh, okay, Dynamo. So we're going to make some sheets. So we're going to make a, a list of names and numbers really quickly. We'll just say sheet one, 
the strings, sheet two and sheet three. You could obviously draw these out of an Excel table. Um, I'm just doing this to save a bit of time. We'll just do our numbers as well. So we'll do one, note that they're strings because um, sheet numbers are text. And then we need to get our title block type as well. So I'm just going to get a family type drop down for this. And I'll just get the A1 metric title block because I'm in the basic sample project right now. So these are our three variables. So we're just going to create a Python script and add two inputs and just feed in our variables. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to edit Python. I'm going to keep my entire boilerplate because I want to have these DLLs and references available whilst I build the script. And then later I'll go back and strip it back once I'm done. One thing I can do straight away is just determine that I don't need the UI or the app or the UI doc. So I can remove all references to the UI. So that's an easy move. From here, I'm just going to get started though. So I'm going to keep the active document and I'm just going to get my inputs. So I'm just going to leave a comment there. So the, the first thing we're getting is our title block. So our title block is a little bit special. So we're first just going to get it as the Dynamo title block. So we're going to go title block underscore D for Dynamo. We're then going to get our names. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say name in Dynamo. So I'm just basically identifying what owns the element at the moment and num D or number. So this, that's our sheet numbers. I could also implement um, the function to make sure that it's a list as well if I wanted to. So just to, just to recap on how to do that, we add if is instance and then we refer to the item and check if it's list as its class or type and then else we put it in a list. Uh, sorry, in one. Likewise, we can just copy that and we can just say two instead of one as the index. And what we might do is just connect up a variable and pass it through so that we can keep testing our scripts just to make sure that we're not getting any errors as we work forward. Okay, so pretty much at this point, we're almost ready to start what's called our transaction, which is actually creating the elements using our API commands. The first thing we're gonna do is just build a list to put our sheets into when we're done. Because the logical thing you'd want to put forward in Dynamo after this is the sheets in Dynamo. But we are going to have to process them as a Revit owned element to a Dynamo owned element and vice versa for the title block. Because the title block is required for the Revit API command. So what we're going to do now is we'll do this and then we'll say title block Revit equals to unwrap element title block Dynamo. And you may recall that in the API docs, when we saw the create method, um, you, you might've noticed that it's title block type ID. So it's not the title block itself, it's its ID. Um, luckily, we can really easily get this by just going capital I, small d for ID. That's a really common command just to get the Revit ID of that specific Revit owned element. So in this case, that's the ID of our title block. We could actually pass this out, I believe. I think this does make it through the node as a Revit owned element. And you can see we can see that ID just by passing it through. What we're gonna do now is begin our transaction. So for this, we're gonna to need to use a for loop, but we're gonna use a zip iteration. So we're gonna be using two things to create our sheets. We're gonna be using the name and the number and the title block is always the same. So we have more than one variable that we need to iterate using. So we're gonna say for name, comma, number as our local variables in our loop in zip. And then we call on our actual lists. So we'll have name from Dynamo, number from Dynamo. So this is our for loop. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our sheet. But we're gonna, we're gonna assign our sheet to a variable so we can do more things to it once it's created. So we're gonna say view sheet. So that's our class, which we're calling on. And then our method, which is create. And you'll see you get some prompts for what you can do. So you do get a little bit of help from Dynamo. And the reason this is happening is because of the DLLs that we're linking through. They allow uh, Dynamo and Python to know what's available from the namespaces. So we're just gonna do this and we're gonna put in our document and our title block from Revit. Uh, we could also obviously use the DIR bracket command to find out the methods of the ViewSheet class if we wanted to. 
Um, I've shown that on a few previous tutorials, so hopefully you've seen it already. Um, for now, we're just going to go forward knowing the syntax from API docs. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the name to set the name of the sheet. And we're going to use our local variable for name to do this. Likewise, we're going to use our sheet number property and set this as our number. So we're doing the, obvious, the opposite of a variable here. We're setting a property to a variable instead of setting a variable to an object. So this is a handy syntax when you're dealing with setting properties of objects in the API docs. Um, I found this really useful in just getting my head around how you can set data for elements. Um, so that's really handy. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to append. So we're going to append to our list of Dynamo sheets. But we're not just going to append our sheet. We're going to have to wrap it back into Dynamo. So we're going to go SHT for our sheet variable, and that's our local variable. And we're going to go to DS type. And in this case, we'll just say false. Interesting that I didn't get the prompt to select the function. So I guess some functions don't come up every time, um, which is a shame because that would obviously help people. But from there, our transaction is done. So we can just close our transaction off with the transaction task done line. And likewise, I'm just beginning my transaction. So telling Revit that I want to interact with Revit owned elements. And this is so that Revit can allot a slot in its queue in the DB to allow people to to wait for you to run your script so that they don't have any um, issues with the elements in their local session. I believe that's one of the reasons that you have to do that transaction. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just close, we'll just delete this. And then we're just sending our output back to Dynamo. In this case, this is SHT underscore D for our sheets back in Dynamo. And these are wrapped back in. So let's just try running this and see what happens. So I'll just try and minimize. I don't think I've made any errors. Um, fingers crossed, but I guess we, you know, sometimes I make errors. Run. There we go. Perfect. It worked. So it's created the sheets. It's set the property of their name and their sheet number. And it's also passed them forward as elements in Dynamo as um, that are wrapped back into the Dynamo canvas for use in Dynamo. Um, so we've pretty much perfectly managed to get the script to work. Um, the last thing usually that I do after this is I'll come back and actually get rid of the namespaces that we're not using. So we're not using sys or our, our local Python library path. Um, I don't think we're using system. So no, we're not. We're not using system. We're not using proto geometry. We're not doing any preview with Dynamo geometry. We are using Revit nodes. So in this case, I believe that Revit nodes relates to, I think unwrap might belong to Revit nodes in this case. And I think so does to DS type. Um, we are using Revit services and we're using both the document manager to get the current document and the transaction manager to manage our transaction. And then we're also using Revit API uh, from Autodesk with the DB import. So we do need to keep the rest of this, but this is essentially our script at this point. Um, and this is a really handy little node um, that people can use. It's actually in my custom package on my GitHub. I think I keep it under Revit uh, Sheets, Sheet Create. Um, so it's essentially the same thing just inside a custom node. In this case, you can see I've got some more annotation and then I've got uh, I've got an error report that's built into it that was inspired by the original node that I based this on from Steam Nodes, which essentially just tells you if a sheet was failed to create. So you have like a little error log. Um, but that's essentially all for this tutorial. In the next one, we're going to be looking at how to put views onto sheets, um, which is similar, but just a bit of reinforcement with a different example. And then looking at a more abstract class, which is the view sun settings. Um, so just each time looking a little bit more at some more parts of the API. So that, that, there we go. So yeah, future videos, more API videos. Um, and then Crumple, my custom package is available on GitHub if you're interested and eventually on the package manager. So thanks for watching today and hopefully that sort of helps get you started on your journey for understanding the Revit API. I, I'm still on my journey. So um, if I made any mistakes or said something wrong, feel free to let me know because I'm still learning all the, the language and the semantics. Um, but hopefully this sort of helps make it a little bit more approachable for you. And the next couple of videos will be some exercises to help again. Um, so thanks for watching today. I make videos two to three times a week. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully you'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.